If you want to destroy a game object by tapping the screen in Unity, follow these steps. If you already have the new input system package installed in Unity, all you have to do is to add a new input actions asset, generate c -sharp class and add a new layer called click. Inside that action layer, add an action called touch. This action will include two bindings, mouse button and screen tap. Now you need to add a small object. Right click to the object sprites square. Resize the square and select a custom image. You can select any image you want. For example, I will set a different color of the square object. Now it's time to add a simple c -sharp script. But wait, before adding a script I will create a simple circle object. You can find it in 2D object sprites menu. Just make it slightly different and smaller from the object that you created before. And you should also drag it to make a prefab object. Let's go to the c -sharp script. First of all, you need to add these things. The game object, the boolean and the input system reference. At first, you need to make the introduction to the new input system. You can do it in void awake, simply by saying input equals new input system. In the void on enable, you should write input enable. You also need the void on disable. The line input disable will be used in that case. But why are these two lines important? Why do we need those two voids? That's because every time the game is over and if the time scale is set to zero, you want to make sure that the input system will be available next time you play the game and click restart. You also need to add the input action. Do it simply by adding Input click touch performed. However, you need to define what action do you want to be performed. In my case it will be called on tap. Make sure to put a callback context and an if statement that says if context performed. It checks if you click on the screen. And it's time for the general part of the script. Ray. Ray equals camera main screen point to ray. This detects if the mouse position is pointed to the ray. Input mouse position. The ray component is important due to the some kind of physics. Ray cast hit. The ray cast hit will be explained in one of the following tutorials. Debug log is used for debugging to check if you are actually pressing the screen. It will check the input mouse position every time you press the key. If physics ray cast. This line of code casts the ray from a point to a location which is hit. The ray cast hit is the screen. The ray is the pointer which is the mouse position. And another if statement inside it will say if hit collider game object is equal to game object. It should say this destroy game object. Save the script and test it. Before testing you need to add the box collider and you shouldn't set it to is trigger. I will show you why. If you try to touch on the screen, it only writes the mouse position, which is equivalent to the viewport position. The object is not being destroyed. Let's see how to fix it. The easier way would be on mouse down. Now add the destroy game object line. So let's try. Now it's working. But I am missing something. I just forgot to add the circle. 
but don't worry, I will add it. First I will add the public boolean, and then I will add the game object. I also need to make some changes in the script, like I just added the debug log that will check if the value is true or false, but now I need the position of the mouse. Vector to position. Camera main screen to world point. As it says, screen to world point is actually the position of your mouse. That it's going to be spawned at the position of your mouse. So the screen will be converted to the world point. Instantiate. This line of code will generate the shoot object on the position and on the quaternion. So basically this object will be generated every time you press on the screen. To make sure that I didn't forget how to use is clicked in this project, just put is clicked to true if you tap. Debug log will write the line that says true or false and put it in if statement. Don't forget to add one more script. It will contain public float time to destroy and will invoke the destroy me void that will destroy the circle object. Save the script and go back to Unity. Make sure that you add the destroy after time script to the circle prefab and try to play the game. Now, here are the circle prefabs. As you can see, the bool is clicked is false, but this doesn't drop the boolean true. Don't worry. I will continue to make more tutorials and more creative videos about game development. I will make sure to post the C-sharp scripts online. Stay tuned to the new updates from the creator of Cosmobot. Goodbye.